Hello, my name is Aquila Bay, PhD, and I'm the Chairman, President, and CEO of Federation for Law and Government and its subsidiaries. The subsidiary DMH Public Transportation Watch is out there monitoring CTA, PACE, and METRA and reporting the good and bad to the command parties. Today, I want to discuss again about our differences of the Black American, which is in plethora in our poor Black neighborhoods, and the African American. And I was on a train at 0940 this morning, the 17th of December, 2018. And while on the train, at this time, last car, which I don't have the number at this time, we were passing 69th going towards 63rd, and I noticed that there was a black woman to my uh, right sitting on the corner last of the car, and then there was a CTA employee, which I believed her badge number to be 61852. A volunteer corrected me, stating that her badge number actually was 61872. And at 940 to about 950, because that the kids got off at the 35th uh, red line, the red line train was heading northbound, and I had noticed that all these black people are on the train watching a youth with his friend roll a blunt, roll weed, marijuana, whatever. And so I'm looking at our black Americans because, of course, we hate each other, and we're scared of each other, and we try and play that we're not because we say the white man and racism. And But here is a perfect example of the pain that African Americans go through when they know that is something we can do for our kids in the community, even if it's just to talk to them. So I have a black female woman, had to be about 30 years old. I had a CTA employee with a two month old baby and the boy is talking about school and, you know, all the foul language that goes along with it. He's talking to his friend. He's rolling up a blunt. And on camera, you see I'm looking down at this kid roll his blunt. I've got the CTA employee directly across, not saying anything. I've got African-American woman there. I've got other black people, the black girl with her baby, you know, because, again, it's, it's, this is a systemic thing here. We have our black youth girls who are, you know, having these babies and they say it's the white man's the enemy, but yet I'm going to get the white man's check. The white man's the enemy, but I'm going to WIC to go get the white man's milk. You know, we, we have learned to destroy our black people and keep them from becoming African Americans. And I've always discussed that there's a difference because just like a white man will run and say poor white trash, we have a difference between the black American and the African American. We know the black American is somebody who continuously blames everybody else for simple things that can be solved within self or within the community if we stuck together, but we don't. The African American is somebody who at least is attempting, trying, or making a way for himself and his family the legal way. And on this train at 9.40 in the morning, going northbound to Howard. And as I said, this is a red line train with all these black people on it. I've got a CTA employee with the badge number 61872, patting her little baby, one, two, three months old. And I've got the other people there. I've got my loose square weed man. I've got all this stuff going on. But this this young boy talking to his friend about school is rolling up a blunt. And I just simply just said, you know, what respect is there? You would actually be rolling up your blunt to get high before you get to school. The woman across heard me and she jumps down my throat and tells me that why are you bothering him roll up his blunt instead of agreeing 
that there is a time and place for everything because you don't know who's on this rail car. You don't know if the police are on the rail car, the undercover detectives on the rail car. We are so busy trying to find a way to do what's wrong and let it be acceptable in our society that our kids are suffering as they sit in jail cells because the people that are allowing them to do it in their face are saying, you'll get caught one day. I hate your guts just that much. You don't believe it. You don't want to hear it. And I love that you love me lying to you and letting you do wrong in front of my face because the day is going to come, you're going to get locked up. And that's how I feel this woman was telling me to leave him alone at 17 years old, rolling his blunt, getting ready to get high before he gets to school. So when I finally get upset and stop the train so I can say, hey, motorman, you need to get this person off the train because this is a 17-year-old boy rolling up his blunt. I have CTA employee in uniform who works for the rail system because that's the kind of uniform she had on. Badge number 61872. She stands up and says, look, step on back in the car. CTA no longer believes that that is a crime. So I asked her again, I said, oh, so I should step on the train and let it go. She said, let it go. CTA does not think that this boy is committing a crime. When she said that, everybody no longer had a defiant of difference. It used to be where several of the people were on my side and several were on the boy's side. Now everybody's on the boy's side. He's getting angry now. I'll beat your ass, nigga. Now you see CTA say it's okay for us, little 17-year-old. We ain't doing nothing wrong. We just rolling our blunts. We just want to get our high on before we get to school. Then the woman jumps in and says, shit, if Oh, you know, hell, I bet you 45% of us on this motherfucker car alone is hot before we get our, we get to work and get to school. This is what our problem is. We have no pastors. We have no Malcolm X's. We have nobody in our community saying at the end of the day, buying it isn't the issue. Because I didn't see you do it, right? Then again... Let's be honest, on CTA, red line train between 95th and 22nd Cermak, we got nine and 10 brothers walking up and down the train. Police ain't doing nothing about it. You would think if five or six or seven brothers were arrested and they got to jail and whatever, and they got out of jail and they spread, I ain't doing that no more because I spent 10 days that time, five days that time. You know, when you ain't convinced, when you ain't convinced for that, Sometimes they think about it, but then there's what they call the three strike misdemeanor law, where if you got three or more misdemeanors behind you, the state's attorney can change it to that felony charge. Democratic Party is not interested in that. Democratic Party wants you to continue as a black man to do wrong to your people so that they can get you for some real big and lock you up for the rest of your life. And it's sad that our African-American people are banished and punished. People like me. All I said, started a conversation out just as bluntly as I can. Wow, how is that you can pull out your blunt, roll up your blunt and get high before you go to school. And instead of a mom or a mother or a woman of concern saying, you know what? Yeah, you've been talking about school. Don't you want to be good in school? Don't you want to accomplish a goal? Don't you, why you got to get high before you get to school? Instead of that kind of conversation, she browbeat me about how I opened my mouth. Nobody else opened their mouth on this 17-year-old black boy rolling his blunt. Why you got to bother? And then I got a CTA employee in uniform with a baby telling me to my face that CTA condones this. CTA says it is okay. We don't consider this a crime. Even though we got this big thing up here saying no smoking, no radio playing, and none of that, him rolling this blunt is not yet a crime. It's okay. And everybody in the car is like, damn, no wonder we got nine and ten brothers selling blunts, loose squares, and weed and everything else through here. Because CTA says it's okay. No wonder I ain't seen no police arrest. No wonder I ain't see them. They say it's okay. That's the only thing that can go through your mind because that's what went through mine. It's like DMH Public Transportation Watch is out here trying to say, hey, we have all these good people out there doing their job every day for CTA, just trying to do, just trying to make a living, trying to make an honest living so no supervisor comes and writes a note, some supervisor and call them in the office and say, well, this citizen said this about you, uh, this report says this, these cameras show that what they're saying is true. Nobody really wants that. But then again, 
blacks hate blacks so much and I'm trying to move up the ladder by knocking you down or I see that you've got a, a five dollar job and a, I, I got a four dollar job I got to make it to where you got no dollar job you know this is what we're doing we don't see it because that what happened today on the train was the most embarrassing thing to me because I believe in respect I believe that if I buy a damn bag from somebody knowing it's illegal then I would go in the alley, go in my house. And the sad thing is the Mexican believes that still. That's why they get in some place today. You know, he got more respect to the Democratic Party than ever. I mean, you notice how Rom gets on TV all the time talking about this is a sanctuary city. You notice how all the Mexicans got jobs, can't speak English. And that's okay today because blacks allow it. So I'm not I'm not mad at the Democratic Party for destroying the black man because he's asking for it. He votes for the freebies. He votes to be on the government payroll. You know, food stamps is considered government payroll. SSI is considered government payroll when you really don't need it. And when you stay on food stamps and you stay on government payroll and you're always getting wick and you putting your children on Ritalin so you can get some extra money when they ch your children could be the best doctor in the world. But you hate your kids so much because you're trying to get a mighty dollar that you got your children taking all these damn drugs. So I'm ranting, but I'm letting you know how this simple event from somebody like me who's saying I'm an African-American. I'm a man who wants to own a business. I want to be able to provide, provide jobs to my fellow black brothers. I want to change the history of being able to provide jobs for many brothers who want to. I want to provide jobs. I want to do things to help brothers and sisters, but I can't do that when I got a CTA employee who tells me it's okay for him to smoke blunts until he just blunted out. It's okay because when he goes to CTA and try and get a job, I just informed him. I just let him know the CTA don't think that's a crime. But when they say pass that piss test, then it's, wait a minute, but the, the CTA employee, badge number 61872 on the 17th of December, 2018 at 9.40 in the morning while I'm on the way to school, I'm already late and shit to school. But you know, she said the CTA says it's okay. Because that's how he's going to get and everybody going to defend what well, she didn't actually say it was okay. She did. We're going to try and put bullet holes in it. But the way that those people treated me on that car when this CTA dressed employee did what they did by saying what they said, that's the only thing you can walk away with is that it's okay today. And so I wanted to bring this video to let you know that these are the things that I'm talking about as to why blacks need to stop trying to say and try and block the conversation. Because in, until we start doing like they do in AA, you know, in AA, you got to stand up and say, I am an addict. Now, when I admit I'm an addict, I can work on that and I do better. You know, there are doctors, there are social workers, there are psychiatrists that are addicts that are recovering addicts that have their medallions around their necks proudly saying I'm one, three, five, 10, 12 years, 15 years, whatever. These medallions around their necks saying that I admit it to me being a crackhead. I admit it to be being a sex addict because we have sex anonymous too. I admitted the problem and I solved the problem. And guess what? I've been clean. I've been able to take care of my demon. But now in the black community, there is no responsibility now. There's no respect now. There's no dignity now. We don't believe in these things. Black America does not believe in respect, responsibility, or dignity. And we quick to blame the white man when our kids are shot. But here it is. You let a 17-year-old roll a blunt in front of you, fellow black sister, fellow black brother. Because again, it's one thing to buy it in secret. It's another thing to smoke it in secret. But when you then let them do it in public and you condone it, nobody's saying it's wrong. We don't have no, the senior citizens are scared of the black kids. Oh my God, they are so scared of the black kids. They can't walk down the street, they're so damn scared. But we say, oh, it's the white man vote. And that's our black adults teaching our black children that it's always the white man's fault when all we have to do is say, baby, you know the difference between right and wrong. Why are you in public doing that? Why are you in my face doing that? Why don't you respect me and you, us? Why can't we get respect from each other first? No other race can respect us until we respect each other. That's all I looked for today, and I didn't get it.
I got a woman telling me, hell no, sit your ass down, don't complain about no 17 year old boy rolling his blunt and getting high before he go to school. Let that nigga go get arrested, go to jail, get killed, don't give a damn, don't stop this train because it is okay today. And now that everybody has heard that and they're spreading that around within a year, all the kids will think it's okay to smoke it in front of your face. And then what are you going to do? You're going to justify why it's okay to do that too. But yet we'll say it's the white man. It's the white man who don't want to get our kids no jobs. You sit up here 65 years old and you need your child to help you pay a light bill. But you got to run to the white man to go to see them. Because your son can't help you. This is what I'm talking about. You're destroying our children, and nobody wants to say you're right. I, it's like I'm, I'm sitting up here amongst 30, 20, 30 black people on a train car between 69th and 63rd Street, and, and everybody's telling me I'm the enemy. I'm the enemy because I believe in righteousness. I'm the enemy because I believe it's wrong to actually be 17 years old and smoking blunts before you get to school. So I wanted to mention that. I wanted to go ahead and let you know that DMH Public Transportation Watch has a lot of volunteers out there who are African-American. These are kids who've been to jail before and they find that there just is no way. They go to jail, they see the injustice, they see everything, but then when they sit down and say, I'm here, how can I make sure I don't come back? And so when they come to DMH Public Transportation Watch, when they come to Federation for Law and Government, they learn from me and my team that there is a better way. And it's not that hard. It's just admitting that we have to sacrifice and be respectful to each other. We have to sacrifice and give some understanding. And we can't get understanding when we're so busy playing the game of it's the white man's fault. But I'm going to tell you to do wrong. How can a CTA employee tell me? And I, I, I'm, I'm sure that this video is going to reach some CTA employees. And I, I, I'm looking forward to getting a response from CTA saying, who would you hire that would lie, manipulate, or deceive the public by announcing that it's okay for a 17-year-old boy? And see, nobody had yet time to ask the question of the boy. Where'd you get the money from? Because, you, you know, we, the majority of our black boys are already broke and destitute. They're running up to CTA turnstiles, begging to ride free or jump in the turnstile. So we ain't got no money. We just feel that there's nothing we can do because there's nobody on the train that's willing to say, man, I got a good job. And the only way I got that good job is I passed the drug test. Can't even get that out of nobody. Everybody on the train either kept their mouth shut or they jumped on the bandwagon and said, yeah, because a CTA employee said it's okay for a 17-year-old to roll a blunt and, and get ready to smoke that shit before they get to school, then it's okay today. Not one person, not one freaking person. And yet next time when a black boy is done injustice from a white man, we want to say the white man fault. But we're not looking at just this picture, just a snapshot of how all these black men and women were on this train car watching a 17-year-old boy roll a blunt, talk about school, and how when he get out of school, he going to do all these things, which is not all that, none of the stuff he was saying. But, but it, 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 it doesn't need to go any further. I just wanted to, to express this on a video to let you know that the reason why I started Federation for Law and Government in 1999 of August 25th is community and social services on a private, nonprofit basis. So kids can come and say, hey, I need an ID to get a job. Hey, I need some job training. Hey, I need righteousness and truth put in me so that I can make it to more than just a McDonald's worker. I want to be more than a Walmart associate for the rest of my life. I want to start a business. Hey, I've been to jail, and I'm tired of all the doors being slammed in my face. I think I can start a business. Can you help me? Hell yes, I can help you. This is what I have. This is what I do. But it's like I'm on the losing end because nobody's backing me in the black community. And now I see why all these thousands and thousands of, of, of storefront pastors open up their church on Sunday, praise the Lord, take the money, and run until next Sunday. Now I see why. Because people like me with the services I offer, black folks not interested in my services. That's how I feel. I feel that because it's a, how is it that a mother 
of a newborn baby who's in a CTA uniform can condone a 17 year old. She just sat there watching. And then when I did what I did, she went against me and said, it's okay today. She said, CTA says it's okay today. So now, but yet when that police officer comes back behind her a week later and arrest him, he's now, the black woman told me, the black woman in uniform said, the black woman in CTA said, and that's not going to hold up in court though. That's, that's, that's the problem. And so now he has more hate for black women. That's why he calls a bitch and hoe now. He doesn't know their names. I mean, you'd be surprised on how many brothers you can walk up to at 17 years old when they're saying, yeah, my bitch, my bitch. What's your bitch name? I don't know because that's my bitch. Because our black women, they, they care less than it too. Because we have been so evil. We have no respect. And that hurt my heart to be on a train car full of black people who are always talking about how the white man won't give us no jobs and how a white man doing all this wrong. And I'm sitting there, white man doing so much wrong, but yet not one of you people said at 17 years old, being high before you get the damn job is not going to work. You have to pass the drug test. I don't care how much you think weed is legal. It ain't right now. And to pass the drug test is the first thing. Well, I'll just get the $30 and go to uh, the 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 store, the, the health food store, and get the shit and drink it. And da, 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 da. Nothing's owned by blacks. So tomorrow, if Walmart says we want to do a worldwide drug testing, we want to do a Chicago drug testing, it is estimated that over 40% of the black employees would be fired immediately for being high on the job. That's how, that's how much money is spent in the drug community. We got all this money, but we don't have no, we don't have a department store that's owned by us. We don't have a grocery chain that's owned by us. We vote for people who hate our guts. I mean, look in California, you have a black woman who talking about uh, impeach Trump, but yeah, when you ask her, what has she done for her black people while she living in a $4.2 million mansion, 90% of the black people in her community ain't got jobs, ain't got nothing. And we love that shit because we're saying on the one hand, we hate the black man because we've been taught to say the black man is racist. The, the, I mean, the white man is racist, the white man is the white man that. But on the other hand, we're not we're not doing anything in our community to our people. We're not, there's no one, there's no, no Catholic blacks, no uh, Christian blacks, no, 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 no black people are on the trains and buses unless they're outrightly crazy because I do see when there's some people get on there and they yell out the Lord is good and this that and the other but they do it in such a weird way that you think they're mentally ill but an actual pastor an actual group of ministers to go out there and just preach and say there's a better way we don't have that in our community and it hurts my heart and that's all I'm saying and I want you to email me and I want you to thumbs up or thumbs down my video. I want your comments is just to help me understand. I really want to understand because I don't understand. I am not that old. And yet I see our kids growing up that they need a blunt before they start school. They need a blunt after school. They think it, they think it's okay. It's, it, it was shameful for me in my day to have to beg. It was shameful that I could go to the bus driver and say, Please, my mama ain't got no money. Please, my daddy ain't got no money. But it's even worse when you lie and say, the $10 that my mama gave me to get to and from school today, $250 to get there, $250 to get back, I bought two sacks, and I'm a lie. Two dimes, the two nickels. I bought two nickels a weed, and I'm lying to CTA every day getting a free ride. That would hurt my heart within to be telling such a horrendous lie that I would live a lie every day of my life, that I'm so, I need to get high like that. And I'm always preaching to the world, I quit what I want to, I quit what I want to. But I'm, I'm just that bad. I'm just that disrespectful. I'm just that, just everything. And I don't have anybody saying anything about it. And when they do, it's all in secret. You know, we, we, we able to type, man, it is wrong, man. It's wrong. It's sad. We got to let them brothers go ahead to go to jail. Now they'll say that. And then as soon as something happens, white man, white man, we jump ship, jump ship. Can't, can't, can't hold on to what we said in the know. As long as my name ain't said, I'm going to tell you, black man, you know, black, black kids ain't shit, man. They disrespecting us. You know, we typing good ass letters. But oh behold, when he get locked up in jail, man, the white man didn't have to do that to that boy, man. The white man didn't do that to the boy. Be 
because then you know that the boy is going to look at you and say, wasn't it you that kept me away from being a success? All I needed was you to just be encouraging to me. You didn't even encourage me. You sat there on that train and let me get high every day. You didn't even encourage me. How does, what does that say about our black folk? So I thank you very much for your time. Please contact me, write me, let me know what's going on. I really want to understand this. Thank you.